This storm just appeared. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville. And five minutes ago, it was almost sunny. And it just opened up. This is great for our nursery. Trees need a drink, and they're getting it naturally. We raise all kinds of trees and shrubs, and as you can see, there's many different colors. We're on Route 313 in Fountainville. Just give us a call at 215-651-8329. Hello, my name is Mike Curtis from Highlandville Farm. Today we have in front of us a Japanese weeping maple. And I'm going to tell you how to water and how to fertilize it. When we fertilize our plants, we usually fertilize them about once or twice a year. The first time is just to make sure that it's the right color, and the second time is for the next year's growth. The reason that we are concerned about fertilizing for next year's growth is that a Japanese maple is considered to be a determinate plant. A determinate plant means that each and every year that when it grows out, there is a determinate amount of leaves and stem that can be formed. And that the determined amount of leaves and stem form is determined by last year's growing season. If the growing season from last year was a good growing season, the plant makes many new leaves and stem parts for the next year. And those new leaves and stem are stored in the bud. So when the bud forms, it's very important that it has enough water and enough fertilizer in the system of the plant to make lots of new parts for next year. When we fertilize for next year, we usually fertilize in about early August. That way that the fertilizer can get into the soil and get into the plant system. Because in about late August and into the fall time is when the buds start to form. And when we use fertilizer, we use a slow release fertilizer called Osmocoat. And we just do a broadcast fertilizer just on top of the plant on the surface. We don't ever put any fertilizer injections or any of the liquid type of and we just use the granulated form that slowly releases over time. Usually Osmocote awesome comes in different colors for different years and we can see it here we have some green and we have some white. The green stuff's from this year, the white stuff's from the other year. That way we know if we fertilize it or not. And when we fertilize, this is just an example of some Osmocote, we just put four in our hand and we just do a light broadcast just over the top. Kind of like that just Make you sure that there's enough fertilizer on there for it to last most of the year. Well, Osmocote comes in different kinds. You, know, you have to read a label for how long each one lasts and for the strength. Uh, the other topic we're going to talk about is how to water these guys is one after you plant them. When you plant them, you should make sure that when you dig the hole out, just dig it a little bit wider than the pot itself so that when you set the pot into the ground, there's a good gap between it and you can fill in the dirt in between the pot, the plant, and the surrounding soil, making sure that there's no air pockets in there. You don't want to compact the soil around, you just want to use your shovel to work the soil into the ground, getting rid of all the air pockets. After that, give it some water, that way it settles nicely. And after planting, make sure you go back and keep the ball moist. It's important to keep the ball moist, not overly wet because, or overly dry. Uh, once, if it's overly wet, there is no oxygen that gets into the soil, and then the root starts to rot and, and it dies. The whole plant dies. If it's too dry, the roots no longer grow, and the plant wilts, and roots don't have cuticles on them. So once they dry out, they're they're thirsty. So just make sure that the keep, keep it moist, and the plant should do fine. If you have any questions about the Japanese maple, just give us a call at two one five. 651-8329. Thank you. This is Nandina. Give us a call. 215-651-8329. We have plenty of them here. Real nice evergreen. Only gets to be about five, six feet. These are nice heavy plants. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 and these are our real nice looking burning bush, Euonymus alatus compacta. 
These are about four foot high, four to five foot high, and uh, they're uh, a heavy, heavy plant here. They're in a 22 inch ball, and as you can see, after we dig them, we uh, put a drip water line system down for them to take care of them. These are $60 until the end of 2009. And we have about 400 of these to sell. And you're welcome to come out to the farm and take a look at them. We're located on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. These can take a little bit of shade. They are considered an invasive plant. So, you know, just, just to let you know, in some areas you wouldn't be able to have these. Like in New England states, it's not legal to grow this plant. But it's okay in Pennsylvania, as far as I know, New Jersey and other local states. So just give us a call at 215 651-8329. This is a real nice looking bush, is it not? This is the burning bush. Thank you. Uh, this is a block of uh, witch hazel vernalis. They run in here anywhere from about four to five up to seven to eight and some eight to nine down in the lower end. Uh, beautiful heavy block. Uh, very nice plant. Good native tree. These are three foot Leland cypresses here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. We deliver and plant these up and down the East Coast. We sell thousands and thousands of Leland cypresses and green giant arborvitas each year. These are our three foot Leland cypresses. Next to it are our four foot. And over here are some green giant arborvitas. And we have thousands of trees, plants, and shrubs for you, as well as lots of landscaping stone and other materials.